playing game of many horror titles is to unsettle and disturb the player as much as possible. If a horror game can't do this, it's fair to say it kind of fails in a massive regard. The problem though is that audiences have become well versed in horror tropes. It's become far too easy to tell when a fright is coming, typically when the sound becomes suspiciously quiet and there's enough empty space on screen for something to appear in. For horror games to really catch us by surprise, developers need to get creative with what they throw at us. Thankfully, developers have found themselves to be deviously inventive when it comes to overcoming this problem. Alongside catching us by surprise with exquisitely crafted scares, along with some carefully calculated misdirection, developers have likewise managed to use the game's own mechanics against us in wicked ways. No matter how familiar you reckon you become with everything horror, you won't have seen these cruel tricks coming. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 cruel tricks video games played on horror players. Number 10. Kill the dog to maintain cover. The Dark Pictures Anthology, The Devil in Me, 2022. Throughout our time in The Devil in Me's recreation of H. H. Holmes's Murder Castle, developers Supermassive Games ask us to partake in a selection of cruel choices, which can determine which of the plucky group of survivors will make it and which will be gruesomely killed. However, no choice you're presented with is as painful or as difficult as when you meet the wonderful dog Connie. While being pursued by Dumet, you'll uncover the lovable but loud canine in the farmhouse. As the killer approaches, you're presented with the dastardly option of killing Connie to remain undetected. Depending on who's left alive, this scene can play out slightly differently, but it's the version where only Kate makes it that's the most mischievous. The game actually encourages you to kill the pooch during a quick time event, but of course that's going to be the last thing you actually want to do. Showing the animal mercy instead will lead to Kate being discovered. The killer swings his axe and a large blood splatter on the wall signals Kate's demise. In some deceitful misdirection, the blood was nothing more than tomato soup and both Kate and Connie escape with their lives. Number 9. The Shabby Doll, Silent Hill 4 The Room, 2004 being a survival horror game, the fourth entry in the Silent Hill series, The Room, will see you spending a lot of your time searching each area for crucial resources, like health, ammo, and puzzle items that you need to progress. Given that each item the protagonist Henry Townsend can get his hands on is probably going to be important later, you'll be filling up that inventory with anything you can collect. When Henry is offered a shabby doll during the apartments level, it would therefore seem in our best interest to accept the gift. It might be needed to solve a future puzzle or possibly even be connected to a secret ending. However, this item serves no useful purpose whatsoever. In a sly trick from the developers, the only thing that happens when this doll is in Henry's possession is that in his apartment, a key location that's used as a safe room between levels, it becomes haunted at night by nightmarish doll faces that appear on the wall. It's as unpleasant as it sounds, so probably a good idea to not take the nightmare doll. Number 8. Don't pick it up. The Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medan, 2019. Being a loving homage to schlocky teen horrors, Man of Medan is full to the gunnels with jump scares. Throughout your time on the derelict ship, you'll be treated to a parade of things jumping out at you to the accompaniment of loud musical stings. While it's easy to see a lot of these jump scares coming from a mile away, Man of Medan is particularly effective when it comes to its creative gameplay mechanics. At one point in the game, Alex and Julia will find their way into a deserted crew quarters, and with there being no sign of any imminent danger, you're therefore free to explore at your leisure. Examining objects is a fundamental component of this series. It's how the sinister secrets of the ship are uncovered, and by this point, you'll have become used to picking up everything you can. So when you take a moment to inspect a small skull, you're just going to assume it's business as usual. Picking it up, turning it around, you get the gist. When placing the item back down, however, the developers deploy a fiendish jump scare as a ghostly hand reaches out to grab Alex. After hiding an unexpected scare disguised as a core mechanic, trusting interactive objects after this point proved to be a difficult task. Number 7. Playing Fetch Yomawari Night Alone 2015. Japanese indie horror Yomawari Night Alone is a simple yet completely effective outing from Nippon Ichi Software. Boasting a gorgeous hand-drawn art style and a soundscape comprised of bone-chilling ambiance, this title sees you venture out into the dark and almost deserted streets of a quaint neighborhood, as the young protagonist searches for her sister when she fails to return home. To survive, you'll need to avoid the many ghoulish spirits roaming the town that are only visible when illuminated by the protagonist's trusty flashlight. 
Before setting out on this ghostly adventure though, Yomawari begins on a more upbeat note as the youngster takes their adorable dog Paro home from a scenic walk. It's at this point where you're introduced to the basic controls. Along with learning how to run and tiptoe, the tutorial also teaches you how to interact with objects as Poro spies a pebble he'd like to play with. But when the game tells you how to use the item, the girl throws it into the middle of the road. Before this time to register what's happened, Poro excitedly runs after the rock and is immediately run over by a truck. After seeing the blood smear on the road, you'll understandably be forever emotionally scarred. Number six, look out the window, Resident Evil Village 2021. It's fair to say the protagonist Ethan Winters is put through some of the worst events of his life during Resident Evil Village. In addition to seeing his wife killed and his infant daughter stolen by Chris Redfield at the start of the game, Ethan finds himself in a remote village that's become overrun with monstrous creatures. Not only does the titular village have vampires and lichens for our unfortunate protagonist to face, there's also a handful of puzzles which he needs to overcome if he's going to find his daughter. Not long after escaping Lady Dimitrescu's castle, you need to get past a vehicle, by which you can only do by finding a jack, since it's blocking your path. This crucial item can be found in a small building to the east of the village. However, it's locked in a cupboard. Thankfully though, the owner has left a handy clue on how to find the lock's combination on the back of a photograph. It simply says, look out the window. Upon following these instructions, some strategically placed numbers can be spotted outside. However, looking out the window also causes a lichen to materialize out of nowhere right in front of the window, giving us a cruel and perfectly timed jump scare in the process. So yeah, thanks Capcom. Number five, take a closer look. Condemned Criminal Origins, 2005. Set in the grimy, crime-infested city of Metro, psychological horror Condemned Criminal Origins saw us take on the role of FBI agent Ethan Thomas. He's on the hunt for a notorious serial killer known as the Matchmaker, who likes to pose his victims with mannequins in gruesome tableaus. But when Ethan's framed for the murders, it's up to him to crack the case alone. To help track the killer down, Ethan has an assortment of gadgets at his disposal to identify and collect evidence. This is a main mechanic of the game, so when you stumble upon another of the killer's victims stuffed in a locker, you won't think twice when the trustworthy Lieutenant Rosa asks you to do some sleuthing. Equipping the camera, you aim it at the corpse and zoom in to take a close-up shot as requested. And of course, this is the moment where it becomes apparent the victim is still alive. Just as the photo is snapped, the man springs back to life and grabs Ethan, catching us completely by surprise. While jump scares are often the least effective kind of video game tricks, Condemned's devilish antics are a prime example of how to do it right. Number four, The Trapdoor, The Quarry, 2022. Nothing good ever happens at a summer camp. Take a look at The Quarry, where a group of camp counselors fall prey to a night of horror when they're stuck at Hackett's Quarry. Alongside the various horrors terrorizing the teens throughout the game, the cast of characters will likewise be faced with some difficult choices that will decide how fortunate their fates will be. However, the developers saw their chance to have some extra fun at our expense with the outcomes of some of these choices. One such case comes when the scantily clad Emma wanders into a treehouse while filming one of her vlogs. The sound of something moving outside prompts her to ask if she should look through some belongings or open the trap door and quote, die a horrible, painful death, as she jests to her viewers. With a monster potentially moments away from bursting into the small room, it's understandable not to want to linger there for too long and decide to leave as soon as possible. Choosing the latter option, however, proves to be a fatal error. Opening the trapdoor sees a creature brutalize Emma in one of the game's more violent death scenes. Well, you can't say you weren't warned. Number three, do as you're told, Blair Witch, 2019. From developers Bloober Team, the horror masterminds behind Layers of Fear and Observer, Blair Witch saw us return to the sinister depths of the notorious Black Hills Forest. Set two years after the events of the Blair Witch Project film, this game saw you take on the role of former police officer Ellis, who, alongside his canine companion Bullet, enters the woods in search of a missing boy. It's not long, of course, before Ellis's search takes a malevolent turn as he's led further into the witch's domain. Strange entities emerge from the darkness to torment him, while traumatic visions from his past begin to blur the line between past and present. It becomes apparent that the witch intends to toy with Ethan's head, but this deception goes further than it seems. In a deviously clever twist, and yes, I'm about to spoil the game, so I'll give you three, two, one, 
and the witch has been manipulating you since the very beginning of the game. If you've as much as picked up any of the figurine collectibles, killed an enemy, or followed any of the witch's instructions, you'll have fallen for her trap. Without even realizing that you've done anything wrong until it's too late, you'll have locked yourself into the bad ending of the game. Number two, Mimics, Dark Souls 2011. The Soulsborne series has become pretty synonymous with all of the mean gotcha moments that they've played on us over the years. It just wouldn't be a From Software game at this point without the developers planting harsh practical jokes in them. Whereas Elden Ring contains trap chests that teleport us to tougher areas and Bloodborne has the hilarious log trap, there's no trick as quintessentially Soulsborne as the mimics from Dark Souls. In the oppressive world of Laudron, where every enemy would fit right at home in our nightmares, every resource we can get our hands on is vital. Every treasure chest then is a sign that we've thankfully found something we sorely need, whether it's a better weapon or piece of armor to help us get past the next boss. But not all treasure chests are safe. Some, it turns out, are gangly limbed, toothy terrors known as mimics that will take a big bite out of greedy adventurers who don't pay close attention to which way the chain is facing. Moreover, these enemies don't appear until around halfway through the game in Sen's Fortress, meaning you won't be expecting this nasty surprise when it finally arrives. Number one, Dark Rot. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, 2017. Though it's not an all-out horror game in the same way as the other entries on this list, Ninja Theory's critically acclaimed Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice nevertheless incorporates elements of psychological thrills to make the titular Senua's trip into the underworld as unnerving as possible. As she travels into the depths of Helheim on a mission to save the soul of her deceased lover, the menacing voices of the Furies dominate the soundscape constantly criticizing and commenting on Senua's and our actions throughout the game. However, it's when the game introduces the idea of dark rot that things get especially mean. After death, a black substance appears on Senua's hand. This is the rot, and it will gradually spread up her arm after each subsequent death. If the blackness reaches her head, though, the game tells us this will result in permadeath meaning that failing too much will stop us from finishing the game. What we weren't aware of at the time, and what everybody was Googling at the time, is that this is actually a complete lie. Permadeath does not exist in this game. But by making us think it does, Senua's Sacrifice ingeniously uses its game design to help us put ourselves in Senua's state of mind. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other cruel tricks that horror games played on you. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can follow me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great gaming lists.